From sunny Southern California, this is the Executive Housekeeper 101 from housekeepingrehab.com. Here now is your Executive Housekeeper, Abel Josephson. Ding dong with you. I'm just calling it best practices. These are all the little naughty bits that are important, but I really wouldn't do a 20 minute, 30 minute message on it. Get some tools, have some tools. You don't need to call maintenance. Every time you need a faceplate put on or a lamp tightened up or a drawer that's a little loose, get some tools. Okay, we have a guest call. They say the coffee maker doesn't work. We go take them a new one. We bring the old one back. And what is normally the, the, the way it goes? Somebody puts that coffee maker that has been reported to be bad, they put it back on the shelf in the storeroom. So the next day, somebody calls and say, I, I need a coffee maker for whatever reason. So the houseman or supervisor goes down to the storeroom. Ah, oh, here's one sitting right here. They take it and they take it up to the desk and they put it back. What have they done? They've just rotated bad products. They've just taken one we know was reported to be, uh, you know, faulty and put it with a guest thinking that it's good, not knowing. We didn't test it. Maybe it just needs to be cleaned. And so when coffee makers come down, they are taken to a shelf in the laundry. It is the laundry attendant's you know, project each day to take the coffee makers, to run the white vinegar, just run white vinegar through them once or twice. Put a filter in there and just run hot white vinegar through there. It'll clean all the scale and the crud. She'll make sure it's operating. She'll flush it with a batch of fresh water. She'll clean it up. She'll put it in a clear trash bag and mark it, inspected. And then she puts it back on the shelf in the storeroom. That way we know everything that comes down has been checked and it's going to go back better than it came down no matter what. It's been clean, it's been inspected, life good. Best practices on coffee makers, have extra. If you have a bad coffee maker over here, don't go get it from a vacant room, because why? We have the same problem. Now they don't have a coffee maker. Here's a tool I cannot do without, OptiGuard. Ant. OptiGuard Ant, you take the cap off, it's like a syringe, and it just squeezes out this little gel. It's a clear gel. And you just need enough about the size of the, a pencil eraser. Just put it right in the middle of a trail of ants. They will surround it and eat every bit of it. They take it into the, the nest and they feed it to the queen. The whole thing will be gone in one day. They love this stuff. Some ant killers, and we got ants, and we got problems with insects sometimes. We don't gotta call Echo Lab every time. Just put some of this down, that day you'll be done and kill all of them. You can get it on Amazon. OptiGuard Ant. Woohoo! You know, one of the greatest things about the hospitality and hotel industry, there are hotels everywhere in every city of the world, all over the world. Yeah, go back to your little Bible. Remember Mary and Joseph, they're gonna have the baby Jesus and they went to the hotel where they had a reservation and the inn was full, they were overbooked. So they walked them to a pig patch, dog track hotel, they referred to as the stables. Recognize the story? A hotel story. For thousands of years, we have had this industry. Anywhere you wanna to move to any city in the world, there's a hotel you can work at. May not be your favorite hotel to work at, but there's a hotel if you're a hotel you're as I am. Job safety, working at a hotel is the best practice. Never ever use terms of endearment. Baby doll, sweetheart, honey pie. Hey love, come here. No. Never mention big daddy. Never mention big mama. Never call across the room to a supervisor and say, hey girlfriend, come here. No terms of endearment. Just good morning, sir. Good morning, madam. How are you? Formal language in an informal spirit, in an informal tone. Good morning, sir. How are you? Thank you, sir. I am very formal with the language in an informal vibration, in an informal way but I like the formality. We need to have respect, yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am, thank you madam, thank you sir. For the longest time, I felt like I needed to be on property six days a week. Boy, I was going to be seen and known as a team player. Okay, sometimes you need to be there six days a week, um, but to do this out of fear and insecurity, like I did you know, years ago, is in, uh, inordinately uh, twisted and, and, and wrong. And I had a brilliant general manager set me straight on this. She said, why are you here again? I think I was doing seven days that week. I, I just, I, I've got so much to do. And I told her the truth, I get this kind of idea from my director of rooms that man, team player, you're, you're putting in those, you know, 50 hours. And she said something brilliant to me. She said, um, yeah, it, 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 
you look dedicated when you're there six days a week. So she says, look at it this way. I think that if you can't do it in 40 hours of a week, then you don't know what you're doing. Hey, good to know. <laughs> brought a great amount of relief to me. If you oversee 24 hours of operations, you show up 24 hours a day and you show up without any warning, without any notice. You have PM crew, probably people in your laundry till eight or nine or 10 o'clock, public area attendants, you have different people, you have uh, um, turn down service, that sort of thing. First of all, when you first come into the department, you need to run turn down about one to two days a week for about a month. You just need to stay till eight or nine or 10 o'clock just to get a feel. And you need to get a feel for how much time do they have to do what they need to do. Oh, they sit around a lot. Let's have them folding towels. Let's run the laundry another two hours tonight and get things going. Same thing with your overnight people. I put all my floor buffing and waxing and stripping and carpets and all that stuff overnight. But you find out overnight people get into some problems sometimes. They have a lot of time on their hands. So they need to have a certain amount of towels and laundry and linen. They must fold every night. So you leave them some. So they're busy, less mischief. It's really true. When they're bored, they, oh boy, they start getting involved in things they might not want to be involved in. You need to show up. Your night staff needs to know at any minute, without any warning, you will come around the corner to see what's what. They don't need to be sit there, sitting there eating tacos with their feet on your desk. Show up, pay attention to them, inspect them. If come early in the morning, like the last hour and a half of their shift, go over all the things that they're doing. Talk to them about what's going on in the department like you, because they're not there for the morning stand up. Dedicate some time for your PM evening, and you're overnight, right? You're, uh, I never use the word graveyard. It is not a graveyard. It is overnight. It matters in your professional relationships and come check on them. You are there to find that things are going well, to improve things, to encourage them, to be a team member with them. So go see them, go manage them. You are the executive housekeeper. It's a 24 hour program. This thing is part of your life and lifestyle, personal and professional show up at that hotel at three o'clock in the morning, once every two weeks, at least, just to be seen, if for nothing else. Keeps them on their toes. And night crew needs that just a little bit. Have all kinds of, pro of projects and duties and checklists and things to accomplish each night that must be without fail accomplished. Things that need to be accomplished each week. Things that need to be accomplished at least once a month, have a system for your Unite people. Keep them busy, it's in your best interest. Best practices, never take employees to your home. Never bring somebody that works at your company under your management to your house. Don't let them see where you live. Don't let them know where you live. Don't take them there for projects that you pay them for. Come buff my floors. Can you do some window work? I'm having family over. Can you come over for two hours and help me clean? Never bring employees to your home. Keep your personal life personal. They don't have a desk where they can post all their mementos from their personal life. Why do they come into your work area and you've got the family tree in frames there and screensaver on the on the thing with your ugly baby pictures coming up. Let me tell you a little trick about baby pictures. They think your babies are ugly and they think their babies are beautiful. Don't show them your ugly babies. They don't need to know. Don't personalize. It's disgusting. It's dirty. It's you. We're here for business. We're here for hotel. Have a picture of the fabulous property you work at as a screensaver, as a desktop, this, that, and the other. You get it. I'm just telling you this is a good idea. I'm all over the hotel a lot. I travel, I walk, I'm through the lobbies. If I'm going from here to there, I may tip off in the lobbies just to do a walk around. Looks good that you're looking around and that sort of thing. Carry a clipboard, carry a pen, walk around, be seen making your notes, looking, right? You always carry something with you when you move around the property. So you always look like you are focused and doing something. Just walking around, where's he going? I always see him walking, where's he going? He's always like, I'm telling you, it's a best practice. If I go into a guest room that's occupied, which I do all the time, because that's where my repeat business is. When I go into that room, I've got a clipboard with me. I'm, not, it's not, I'm just not in there just walking, looking. Because the guest comes in, even though I've got a sign on the door, even though the door's propped open a little bit, if I've got a clipboard, it looks like I'm inspecting. Guest thinks, okay, I'm safe, he's inspecting. Best practices. 
optics. All right, so uh, you got a do not disturb sign on a door. You got to go in every three days. You know, I've talked about this, I, I don't know how many times. You got to go in every three days minimum. But how do you get into that room? Here's what you do. First of all, you call the room. Call the room. Is anybody answering? That tells you what you can do. If they answer the phone, you introduce yourself. Hey, I am your director of housekeeping. Make it personal. Make it possessive. You own me. I am your director of housekeeping. Good script, best practice. I'm your director of housekeeping. I noticed you have not had service for three days. Uh, when can we schedule a time to come in? You don't ask them, can we? You tell them, we're coming. When do you want to schedule it? You let them know. You call the room. Ring, ring, ring. There's no answer. There's no answer. Hang up. Give it five minutes. Dial again. Ring, ring, ring. Maybe they were asleep. Ring, ring, ring. Nothing. Fine. You have made every attempt to interrupt the guest without knocking on their door since there's a do not disturb sign, but there's no answer. So you're going to go to the room now. The first thing you do before you touch that door, you take the do not disturb sign off and you put it here. You put it here in your, your waistband behind your jacket. You put that thing out of view and then you knock on the door. Why do you take the do not disturb sign and hide it? because a guest knows they have a do not disturb sign on. And if you've knocked on that door and they open up the door, I guarantee you, guarantee you, 100 out of 100 times, the guest will open the door, see you, look at the do not disturb sign because he's working in optic. He wants you to see him look at that do not disturb sign like, why are you knocking on my door? It says do not disturb. You don't have anything to worry about. You tried to call. So you remove the do not disturb sign. They open the door and they look down. Oh my God, they're off balance on, on one foot now. Oh, I thought I put a do not disturb sign where the do not. Well, oh, maybe I did. Uh, uh. And then you introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Abel Josephson. I am your director of housekeeping. You've not had service here for three days. I've tried to call the room. There was no answer. I made different calls at different times. I'm checking on uh, the quality of your service, the quality of of your service. And then while you're talking to him, you're looking past them in the room just to get some glimpse of the room. If it looks great, everything's just normal, fine, no worry. But if it's a wreck, aren't you glad you did this? Hide the D&D &D sign. Genius, evil genius. F you know, in a guest room, four or five things. It's not 28 things. It's just three, four, five, six things. Make sure these things are right and we'll win the game. Because you feel like there's like, everything has to be da 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 Everything has to be attended to. There are times when this is going really well and then we focus on this. This might just fall back a little bit. And then this takes over. Well, we gotta bring that back up, you know what I mean? It's this juggling act that goes on to keep everything as high as possible in quality and standards. Just keep the program moving along. Don't be overwhelmed, especially when you're new. You pick one thing and get it right, man. Pick one thing and get it right. And when you get it right, get it in habitual maintenance. And then pick another thing and get it right. Don't chase six things at once. I've talked about this ad nauseum all the time. One thing at a time is quality control. You're in control of the quality. You're not in control when you're chasing six things at once. When you're on them every day about coffee makers and about mirrors and about lint on the floor from cleaning rags and about put your vacuum cleaners up, don't leave them in the hallway. When you're like chasing all this stuff, all get one thing right, have one focus all the time. I want to talk about how I keep me the tall boy, Uncle Abel, how I keep me organized. Every day, I have, a, I have a big fat spiral notebook. It's big and thick like this, right? A one inch thing. I'll go through one of these every six months, two a year at least. I write everything down. Morning meeting, uh, check on this, check on that. Uh, we have a group coming in, a group coming in, what time? I write all this stuff down. I don't worry about memory, here's why. I don't need to go back to the director of sales and say, uh, what time is the group coming today? That's bad form, that's a bad look. No, write it down. And so you can call back the director of sales. Okay, those 14 rooms, they're good to go. They're not due until one o'clock, but we're ready anytime. Bring them on, life's good. So I write down all the things that I need that I come across that I need to do in my job. I write them down every day. Every time I think of something that 
you know, I need to do or something comes to me, an instruction or somebody asks me a question, can you order this, write it down. At the end of the day, everything that I've written down, I mark off. You can see I've got some things marked off, I scratch them off. Uh, things that I accomplished, I highlight at the end of the day just so I can separate them. Everything that did not get done today, I turn the page. The next day, I transcribe everything that didn't get done. I go to the next page, I date it. Every page is dated because it's a record of what I did with my time, where I was, what I accomplished, when I ordered it, when I you know, this or that. I also make notes on here about employee issues. Have a conversation with such and such about, you know, cleanliness in the, in the maid's closet. So the next day I go and I write down everything I did not do from the day before. I write it down and that becomes my priority for the day. So I, I do those things first that I didn't finish yesterday. And so it keeps it fresh in my mind. If I don't write it down and it gets three or four days back, I'll forget that it was on my page. That's how I keep myself organized. It's just an ongoing rotating honey-do list. Cha. Pay attention to all of your in-room amenities. Turn all the labels. Make sure you're, when your inspectors come in, all the labels are facing forward on anything. In your mini bars, all labels should be facing forward. You want to use the beauty of that corporate marketing packaging that is given to you by those companies. You want to use it to appeal to your in-room guest. It needs to look just as sharp and be just as straight as the notepad and the pen. Never wear a tie. You're going to be bending over looking under toilets. You're going to be behind the laundry machines, which have big fan belts and pulleys and motors and things and dryers that when you open up may still be turning. You cannot have that tie get hooked on something and kill you. Don't wear a tie. Pay attention to your room attendants and housemen and supervisors in the hallway in the morning. No yelling down the hall. Hey, Rebecca, is this your room? I need towels. No yelling. We are quiet as church mouse. No banging doors. Quiet is equal to clean. A lot of times, uh, as the executive housekeeper, you will feel like you've got to be in touch with that department 24-7, 365, all the time to make sure stuff goes right. First of all, you live a life and a lifestyle professionally where you instill confidence in others and you let them know, I'm going to leave it up to you. When you go on vacation, leave it up to the supervisors. Absolutely open door policy. If you have any issues, you call me. I would be so glad you called. Never let them feel guilty because they call you. Never let them be intimidated to bother you. If they call you at three o'clock in the morning and there's an issue, hey, good morning. Oh, I'm sorry to wake you up. No problem. Oh, no, no. I'm glad that you called. What's going on? How can I help? Positive light. When the phone rings in the morning early, you answer it. Why'd you call me? Why couldn't you wait? Why would you do that to them? It takes guts for them to call and bother you at three in the morning. Use your head. When you go on vacation, some executive housekeepers, they call in every day at the top of the day and then at the close of the day, find out what's going on, what went, you know, because they're so afraid it's going to fall apart while they're gone on vacation. Then there are some that go and, and, and never even worry about it and they won't take any calls. No, I'm off. I'm on vacation. I'm not answering the phone. Have a balance between the two. Take it and take care of your business. Aren't you glad they called you? give you a chance to repair a, a problem or an issue before it got out of hand and became a big problem. You kind of want to be in touch, but you need a private life and a healthy work-free life outside of the hotel. You set up a great department that runs itself whether you're there or not. Who runs the department? Director of ho uh, housekeeping? No. General manager? No. Director of rooms? No. The supervisors? No. Systems, standard operating procedures, employee handbook. That's what runs your program. You're kind of unimportant as long as the procedures and the operations are there and they will manage the system. They are the way, not you. A lot of people put Wear Magazine. All the cities and the markets of the United States, if you go to any hotel, they'll have a Wear Magazine. Wear's a good magazine. It's locally oriented. All your local restaurants and activities and blah, 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 tourist trips and, you know. It's a real cheap and cheesy thing. Do this. Go get a good magazine. Here in Los Angeles, I always use LA Magazine. Always has beautiful, full color portraits of famous people, celebrities, politicians, high fashion. The paper in the magazine is a high quality. Dwell Magazine is another 
great magazine. It's all architectural ideas for rich people. Great paper, great pictures. Man, sit on the patio and just look at all these rich homes people love it and find it and put it in a prominent position like on the nightstand i mean on the uh you know coffee table and, and and make sure it's centered and straight with standard spacing as to where it goes standard placement for the magazine to where it's the same every time they come to the hotel that is such an important thing the magazine is exactly in the same place every year i come this is part of how you build brand. This is part of how you build the concept that we're a clean hotel. Because when it's crooked or not there this time or it's different magazine, that is dirty to them. They don't, that's the only language a guest knows. Is it clean or it's dirty? They don't think, do they have a quality maintenance team with good supervisors? No, they want to know is the room clean? <laughs> Best practices, never be late. The second you think you're going to be late coming into the office in the morning, more than more than 10 minutes because you're there you're on your own you know when you need to be there you you don't have a general manager standing at your door looking at you unless you do i i don't you never want that but a lot of times i have a morning meeting that i have to go to and being late is going to put me late for that meeting with all the managers i call that general man manager on his direct line i'm stuck on the 10 freeway uh it looks like a painting it looks like a brick it is stopped dead i have no idea when it's gonna release, I'll get in. I'll probably be 15 minutes late. Run a no surprises campaign, but the rule is never be late. Here's another one, never call off. Never call off unless you are just absolutely dead, which I never am. I'm fortunate, I'm healthy, I'm gorgeous, I'm never, never sick. I never call off, but if I don't feel well, here's what I do. I call the general manager that evening or late in the day or whatever, and I say, I don't, I don't feel good at all, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come early in the morning before people get there, so if I don't have, if I have something I can pass around, I, I don't make anybody else sick, I'm going to come early, I'm gonna get it all set up. As soon as my team is there and we're running, I go. He's like, great, they'll never argue with that. And it's impressive. You come, you do your job, and then you go away. You don't just, oh, I don't feel well, and then just let it, no. Your department and your career and your job is too important. You push that extra mile, you show up, you get it going. Everybody go to the floors, go. We're good, okay, I'm gonna go. Now you know, everything's set. You, you called off, but not really, right? It's a best practice. You can spend a lot of money buying cleaning rags for housekeeping, but it's an expense. How about you do this? You take your wash rags that are stained or torn that cannot be used, you collect them over the month, at the end of the month, you go get some Rit dye. You just go to the grocery store and you buy a little bottle of Rit dye. Costs a dollar ninety nine cents. Any color will do. I, I tend to use like a, just a blue. You have your laundry supervisor load in all of these dirty, torn, and stained discard washcloths. They're nice. They're Terry. They're still usable as a tool. You're gonna throw in a a, a cup of you know, table salt because the salt makes the dye bind to the fibers. You just throw in you know, uh, a splash or a, uh, you know, a, a, a quarter of a bottle of, of this dye. Just get some dye in there. It doesn't matter. You don't want, you don't want to dye them solid red or solid blue because on the next washing, that will all bleed out. You just want to change the color from white to a color. So you can tell instantly by looking at it, that's a wash rag or that's a cleaning rag. And then the ladies use them for cleaning rags the dyed ones. You never want to uh, have them using white torn stained washcloths as cleaning rags because the supervisor cannot tell. Did she use a washcloth to clean that counter or is that a cleaning rag, you know, that was a washcloth that we've converted. So throw some color on them. That's all you have to do. And you maximize your productivity. You get the most out of that, that uh, linen inventory uh, budget because now you're, you're, whatever's discard, you're using it to clean. You know what else cleans mirrors really good? Pillowcases. Pillowcases, clean mirror really good. Don't leave a lot of lint. Yeah, best practice. The first priority in your day is to open the house and get the program going. Second priority, once that's going, second priority, you are looking on your list to find out what you need to do 
for somebody outside of this department, reports for accounting, chef needs somebody to move a machine back and help them clean the wall behind it. Anything that is outside of your department is a number one high priority for you. Take care of them first. Don't procrastinate on them. Put you second. Then once you've done everything you need to do for them, you're free to do whatever you want to do and indulge. That's the priority. Get your department going. Then my morning, what do I need to do for anybody outside of my department? And then you do whatever you want during the day. It's good to know. It's best practice. If you have a window in your office door and people can look in that window and see you at the desk and see somebody else sitting in a chair chatting with you, hang your dry cleaning on the door. That way nobody can look in, right? That way you can have private conversations with people. Hang your dry cleaning on the door or put Christmas paper over it, something festive and colorful. Cover your window in your office so you can have privacy. If you're in there, close the door. Nobody needs to see you in there on the phone or working on the computer. They don't need to know. If they wanna know where you are, call on the radio. Cover your office door window for privacy. Don't hide the hotel or resort from the general manager or the owners. When you take the general manager to look into rooms, let him see the scar on the acoustic ceiling, if you have one. Acoustic ceiling, ugh. but I've had them. Let them see what's wrong that you can't fix. When somebody comes for inspection, don't hide rooms. Let's not take them to that room because that's got that problem, remember? Let them see the condition of their asset. That's why they're there, they own it. They wanna see the conditions. They can make anything happen with a calculator. We don't have the budget. No, they, those guys go back to Chicago or LA. All right, we can do that, boom, 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 no problem. They're there to check on their assets. Don't keep ownership and management from rooms with major engineering problems or huge stain on the carpet. Let them know you've got the problem. Let them know your obstacles. Number one job in management is to remove obstacles from the way of those that do the work. My job is to remove obstacles is to remove obstacles, not to make sure everybody's following the rules. It's to constantly be removing obstacles, making notes about what needs to be done so we can get it out of the way, right? Don't hide your hotel from managers or owners or presidents or any of this stuff. When you get promoted to the executive housekeeper, when you leave this hotel and go to work for that hotel, no matter what job you take when you get there, one of the most important questions to ask is, what do you need from me in the position that you're giving me? What do you need from me that you right now do not have? You had somebody here before me, they're gone. What was missing in their program that I can make sure I bring to this so I elevate the quality of the position? It's a good question to ask. What do you need from me that you don't already have? Once a week, I meet with my general manager. Is there anything that I need to pick up on or improve upon? I bring the subject up that we're not getting, that we're falling short on. Is there anything? And you know, most of the time they go, no, you're, you're in good shape, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. That You need that. You need that relief inside that they're happy with me. They're okay with me. They don't have to like you. You don't have friends. You have interests. You don't have friends. You have interests. It's not about like me. It's about Am I satisfying the needs of the hotel in the position that I have? What do you need from me that you do not have already? Go ask the other managers where you, you know, you go clean at front desk or you go clean in the kitchen or whatever you do. Ask them, what are we not doing that you need us to pick up on? Good business, look after others. If you have somebody that has body odor problems, they don't bathe properly or don't wear the proper deodorant or whatever, uh, you have to hit that head on. Uh, you have to do that for the other employees. I'm responsible for everything. Listen, uh, I don't know what the problem is. I used to, I, I refer to cologne a lot. I don't know what cologne you use or if it mixes with the soap that you use or your conditioner, but it's, uh, you know, uh, mm, mm, eh, work your way through the conversation, but have it. And you have it. Be gentle, be kind, be fatherly, be whatever you need to be to let them know uh, we have standards. And you as the director of housekeeping have to address all of them, male and female. If I'm talking to a female, I have a female with me. You know, on the odd occasion, I might talk to uh, a supervisor and say, go have this conversation with uh, that woman there or about, mm, you know, I've had people uh, go potty and not sit on the potty, just do potty all over the potty and the floor. 
we have some differences in our best practices in life. You have to address that. That's, that's not acceptable. Pull out the employee handbook and read it to them and say, for whatever reason, uh, you have body odor. And so please address it and be kind and gentle and, and use good taste and good manners. Housekeeping is a sales force. You are in the sales business. You're not in the cleaning business. The sales team gets people to the hotel for the first time. The housekeeping as a sales team generates the guests to repeat their business, to return without the need of a sales department. You got to see your department that way. You must see it that way. You are a sales force. You are a sales team. You are selling the hotel again. Teach that in your monthly meetings. Teach that in the culture of the mind. Use that language. It's a better way to sell the guest for repeat visits. Talk about it in the morning meetings. Get it in the culture of your language. We are a sales team. We are selling the repeat guest. It puts less pressure on the sales team to bring in new guests because we fill the hotel up with re repeat guests so we can drive rate on the new guest. They didn't teach you that in hospitality school. Respect your elders. People older than you, though you're the department head, respect them. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Be kind. Be considerate. Give them a deference. They're not better than other employees. They don't get privileges others uh, don't get but they are your life senior. They are senior to you in life. Approach them just a little bit different. And you make that decision how you approach them. I'm just saying, keep that sense and sensibility in mind with your senior employees, especially ones also that have been with you for 10 or 15 years. No special privileges, special deference and respect because they are older than you. That's just how I was raised. Always help them with their frame of mind as to how to see you so they don't see you in through the eyes of intimidation and fear and nervousness. It's one of the major things I work on with my own behavior and language is to keep everybody cool. I'm another employee. I just serve this role, so you don't have to worry about it. Your role is this. My role is this. They can fire my ass just as fast as your ass can be fired. We have different roles. Why do I get paid more money? I take on more responsibility. You're a room attendant. I want more money. We, I need to make some more money. Hey, take on more responsibility. Be able to, you don't like to work in the laundry. Be able to work in the laundry. Be able to run houseman. Come in on your day off. Be able to do different things and be called on at a higher level. Take on more responsibility. This is how you add value. I have tremendous responsibility. I have the most staff. I have the most insurance plans. I have the highest payroll in the building. I have the most company assets to oversee, right? I have the largest supply cost. I take on a lot of responsibility. I make more than you, but I'm an employee just like you. I just serve a different role. They pay more for this role. Explain this to people. I would sit in the bathtub. We had a lot of weddings at this hotel. I was trying to discover as a new guy, what do I need to pay attention to? What do I have to focus on? I don't want anything to go wrong or we have a big complaint and I never thought about it. So one day I thought, well, we have these brides. They want to sit in these big jacuzzi tubs in the presidential suite. So I sat down in the jacuzzi tub and the first time in the first time of my life, I saw the pipes under the bathroom sink. I'd never noticed the pipes. So I built a project and a program to maintain the cleanliness of the pipes. I saw a whole world when I was in the bathtub, leaned back, you know, feeling pretty like you do. Sit in the desk chair, sit in the bathtub, get in the shower, go and be, a, be around and be in the furnishings and that sort of thing and see what you think, see what you notice, see what you can see from the desk chair. Always be up to date on reservations. No, at the close of every day, how many reservations you're gaining for the, for the next day, then the third day after that, next week, the month. Watch groups that are booked. Pay attention to the rise and fall of staffing needs. Every day watching the numbers. Every day paying attention to the rate. Talking about rate in the morning meeting. Asking questions about revenue management. What kind of rate are we getting from them? Get yourself up into that echelon of management where the money is just as important to the executive housekeeper as it is to the front office manager or the general manager. Be a big league player, as big and as league as you can be. Best practices. 
Teach them how to move up. Teach your people. You you don't you you don't go higher until you outgrow lower, until you're doing everything everybody's doing. And then you outgrow everything. Now you're able to go up. You don't go until you outgrow. And there's two or three salute two or three chemistry things that have to happen. People above you have to be willing to grab you by the hair and pull you up. And that's based on your performance. People that are your peers that work with you have to be agreeable. You have relationships with them to where they are willing, willing, happy to push you up the ladder. And then your relationships have to be with the people below you to where they are willing to follow you when you go up. Teach that, certainly to your supervisors. Teach that to, to employees. Hey man, talk about how to grow up in the company. Talk about how there are other hotels and possibilities. Get out of the realm of day-to-day -day operations sometimes, especially in your monthly meeting, and talk about, you know guys, if you would like to work in Cleveland, we have a hotel. Open up your horizons. The company wants you to grow and flourish. There's no reason for you to leave us. You might be able to leave this and go to more of us over there. Teach people the art of moving up. Somebody has to pull you up. They have to push you up. They have to be willing to follow you up. So pay attention to relationships all around you while you're down here. Best practices. Well, there you go. There's all the little naughty bits. The best practices. All right. Let's get on the floors and let's go practice what is the best. The hotel and hospitality industry is a type of entertainment and a form of show business. Thanks for visiting the Executive Housekeeper 101 with Abel Josephson from housekeepingrehab.com. <laughs>